How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. My Tuesday talk team is superb. How are and you? They keep a cool head when a little bit of segment comes <laughs> comes out of <laughs> a boots a shot. Actually, a little bit of Oshun at her room and she was a little bit, a little bit annoyed. <laughs> We are live on all of our platforms. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Tuesday Talk. Tonight is going to be an amazing Tuesday Talk. And I know that I say that every week because it's true, first of all. But this one combines a few different elements and they are foundational. If you want to learn about certain netaru, if you want to explain it to your friends or your family or your children or your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband. This is really the show. This is this is the broadcast because we're going to go over some uh, very uh, important fundamentals about comedic spirituality and 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 the conversation is going to go where it is going to go. We are also going to be talking about Baba Haru's Joy ID. Now listen, I know some of y'all out there going Christmas shopping, y'all going Kwanzaa shopping, you doing something, something shopping, and we need to support Baba. Baba has brought this legacy to us so that we can even be here on Tuesday Talk. Okay? So we need to support him and his and his Joy ID is so eye-catching and, and breathtaking that when I go out every single time, every day I wear my Joy ID in this finger, and also my pendant, whoop, my pendant from the shrine of my aunt, and also what I got when I went to Kemet and my dad's ankh that I that my brother found after oops, after he passed away. Wow. Yeah. My brother See, was he, he was hiding or something. <laughs> you know, Maybe my dad was he was old school. He didn't necessarily always tell his business. And um you. He was affiliated with the Nation of Islam in some oh, capacity. Wonderful. I don't know. I'm sorry. That's wonderful. And then he must have found comedic spirituality because his license plate changed from El Hajj to Hotep. Oh, see. Yes. yes. And from then the, he has the one H to the other H. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. right. That's right. That's right. So it's it's very important for us to understand you know, our spiritual heritage, because without that, you know, we'll be lost. So That's without so further ado, Baba Peru, Samaj, oh my, I'm sorry. I'm Peru, Samaj, Sepeta. It's a lot. My name, name grew as I got more into the culture, which is what happened, by the way. Right. Because right. anciently, the, um, the Shen, with the now called Cartouche, after the French Napoleon's um, invasion, they call it a cartouche, which means the cartridge of a bullet. We call it shen, which means the orbit of the sun. Mm. And um, so that's that's a little bit of knowledge I need to drop there, right there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And again, like all of our Tuesday talks, you can take notes as we go along or go back and watch it and take notes then. Because really and truly, we have to learn this stuff so we can live this legacy, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, Baba... Can you give us a little bit of history for those who don't know how you got started? Okay. Can with... you start, please? Heat. Yes, I will. Well, first of all, um, this started because in my in my decision, a mission that I was put on when I was a boy by my father to study the Nile Valley culture as much as I could, because he felt that the time had come for people of African ascent to claim the ancient Nile Valley heritage, because that's the heritage that rescued all the major prophets that we read about in the Bible. You know, my, my father was a minister of the Christian faith, and I was in church three days a week. And uh, being... Um, school by Marcus Garvey, he felt that we needed to be more into our African culture in order to respect our source. Because the, the Bible did say, honor your mother and your father that your days may be long on the earth. 
And um, he always said that we are the children of Ham. That's how he knew it in the Bible. Later, I found out in my studies that uh, that uh, Ham's name in the Hebrew is actually Chom, with a K sound, Chom. And uh, then when I studied even further, I saw that that Chom means the same thing that Kem means in the Medunetor, in the um, so-called hieroglyphic language. It means burnt, blackened, or hot, you see? And so when I began to, st I said, wow. And then I saw that in the Bible, it showed that um, Mesraim, which is the Hebrew name for the place we call Kemet, now miscalled Egypt in Greek, um, was also very prominent in our culture. And that Mesraim was one of the sons of, of Kem, or Kom, who they call Ham, along with Canaan and, and Cush, now called Ethiopia. By the way, Canaan is now known today as Israel or Palestine. And uh, that Put or Pata was this the Great Lakes region around uh, Kenya, Somalia, Uganda regions. So knowing this, I said, wait a minute. There's something that we're missing here. And studying that all of these major prophets benefited, benefited from contact with these Nile Valley farmers and gardeners, I said, wait a minute. These are hospitable people. So the movies that I've been looking at telling me that these were heathen and pagan people who worshipped many gods and who worshipped animals, I realized that this was all a distortion of the truth. That's right. And so I really livicated myself. I don't use the word dedicated. <laughs> that's, a, that's from the Rasta influence. That I was livicated to actually being inspired to produce the artifacts of the culture, because wherever we looked in all the world's museums, we would find that they would not consider themselves as having arrived as a museum unless they had even one little piece of what they called Egyptian art. Right. So I said, well, it seems as if all they're doing is digging up our stuff, um, the ancient Nile Valley African um, uh, sa, which they call jewelry, and um, and I said, well, it's time. And when they dug it up, they would make molds of it to reproduce it in their museums and sell it at great profit to themselves. Meanwhile, the land where these artifacts were found has been um, invaded and, and um, are now inhabited by people who speak against symbols and idols, which are the very things that is in their museum now, the world's largest museum is now in in Cairo, in in, um, in Egypt, and um, and that those artifacts they display are actually against the practice of their religion. But a lot of money is being made, so right. I guess I guess a pass is being given for that reason. So I mean, I don't mind sharing the artifacts of my ancestors with the present people who live there because it shows that we are very sharing and loving and hospitable people. And we are very grateful that the Egyptian government is going to such great lengths to preserve these African artifacts. Yes, it's African. That's it's, right. not, it's not Middle Eastern because as we know, the, the attempt to move Egypt into the Middle East, the middle of what? Thank you. It's right there on the African continent. Those of you who want to look Check your map out and you will see what I'm that I'm telling the truth. So, yes, I was inspired then. And I always held in my heart a desire to learn to produce these artifacts. Jewelry is what they used to call it at the time. And um, we call it Sa. In the Nile Valley, the artifacts that we wore on our bodies was called Sa, which means protection. Because... These emblems of our culture kept us focused on divine principles, which I'm going to explain a little later. So it was while I was pounding the beat that I met a man who took me on as an apprentice for one year. Um, and he taught me how to, how, to, um, how to make molds, how to set up a jewelry shop. He taught me the use of the various implements and uh, But he would never let me do anything. He said, just take notes because he said, you know, I have high blood pressure and I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So 
I want you to get this, so just watch me. And for one year, every time I got an opportunity, I would be over in his shop. He had a big shop in his basement. He used to work for the, um, the jewelers up on 47th Street, so he was well employed because he knew so much about the, the art of creating these emblems of, of, um, of jewelry. And so he taught me this. And um, one year later, I got a call from his wife saying, Anacleto se murió. I said, oh my gosh, he died. And um, it was not until I came back from his funeral that I casted my first piece following wow. the instructions that he gave me. Oh, wow. But before he died, I was looking for a, and I tell the story all the time, how I had a friend who was a, um, a, a, a Taurus and I'm a Leo. So I had a Leo ring that I could copy the head to put on a bracelet, but I couldn't find a Taurus ring or, or emblem anywhere to put on the other side of the bracelet. You know, like the what, what they call the West Indian bracelets with two heads on each at each end of the um, of the silver band. So you know what he said? He said, "Let me see your hands." I showed him my hands. He says, "You can do your own stuff." So he went and he bought me the tools. He bought me wax. And he bought me dental tools and surgical tools because that's what jewelers use to sculpt. Mm. That, that was before the computer is now producing so much. And um, I began to sculpt a bull's head. And one month later, I had a bull's head that I was proud enough to show him. He said, yes, I told you you could do this. And from that moment, I began to create things that had meaning. I my family used to say that people are not going to want that stuff. Give them what they, they want. And I said, no, I'm going to give them what they need. What they need. That's right. That's right. That's what need. <laughs> because these emblems of culture enables you to teach without opening your mouth. It's, it it um, taps into the subconscious realm of our brothers and sisters who know that that, that that thing you're wearing, as they would call it, has a meaning, you know. And so um, it's, a, it's a good way to display these artifacts in order to teach and also to inspire the wearer because your, your, your body is a temple of the divine, the temple of the most high. That's so right. how do you dress the divine? How do, what artifacts do you put on this divine temple of ours? I think it should have some meaning to keep your mind prime into, into positivity. And... Um, after I studied and learned the power of these artifacts, and not only ancient African artifacts, I love to create the artifacts of all the old world's cultures, like the yin and yang symbol, the om symbol of, of the Buddhists, and, um, and so many other, the Adinkra symbols of Ghana, like the ones you are wearing on your ear right now, that are those That's beautiful Jinyame, right. which means the omnipotence of the most high, also, it taps into, into, I bow to no one but the divine. That's right. You notice that when I speak, I don't use the G word because that's a German title for the most high. And I want to respect my ancestors. So I use the word divine because divine is gender neutral. And the divine is not just a man upstairs, you know. It's both a mother, father of all creation. That's right. And that's what we do in rediscovering our culture. When we do our devotionals, we always honor the divine mother, father of all creation. Because we're dealing with an androgynous force, an androgynous power that governs the whole universe that always appears as a twin, masculine and feminine, you see. So I began to create from that inspiration. So that's what inspires me, this legacy, because it's not enough just to give lectures and to talk about it. We have to begin to apply the principles that we've been inspired to rediscover by such, such great elders of ours, Dr. Ben, Dr. John Hendrick Clark, and so many others, and uh, people like Professor Smalls and Kaba Kamene and, you know, modern ones who are still on that track of our divine legacy. So that's why I do what I do. So this is what inspired me to create my, my art. And I learned the, um, the lost wax method that our ancestors used 
to create these emblems of our culture. So I was inspired to teach myself and, uh, and I said I had a ground to work on, which is the divine emblems of the culture of my ancient ancestors and my modern ancestors too. And not only that, because I serve my whole community. I serve my Hebrew Israelites br brothers and sisters. I do the Mogan David. I did Chai, the symbol of life in the ancient Hebrew language. So nobody can say I'm anti-anything because I recognize the goodness of all the systems, the Buddhist system, the whatever religion it is. I, I've made the, um, I've made the, uh, I also do the Christian cross for those who desire it because all of these religions were inspired by my ancient Nile Valley ancestors, you know, so I, I serve them all. But on my specific emphasis is on that culture that has been so defamed and so slandered in movies, movies like The Mummy's Curse and the effort to totally steal the African um, stamp of ancient Nile Valley culture by that movie, which has some beautiful costumes. I'm talking about the Ten Commandments by Cecil B. DeMille and others, okay? That, um, that, that is something that we must reclaim. That's right. That's you see? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have um, dedicated my life to doing this work and to serving those who are ready for it. And because I not only uh, create these emblems of culture, but I would teach the culture from which these emblems sprang, specifically the Nile Valley culture. And um, when I began to teach that, I got a lot of um, blowback from some of the very scholars who inspired me. <laughs> and I realized that many of them were not into practice. They just wanted to inspire our people with the lectures. But when you walk out of the lecture, you would forget about half of or more of, the, of half of the things that you, that you were told. That's right. So I felt the best way was to begin to practice and to live my art. That's and right. My art is at balance. And where do you begin to live and to apply my art? You begin with this body temple by equalizing the balance of your acid and alkaline because we eat a purely acidic diet in this culture, too much sugar, too, too much, much sugar. food, um, too much starch, and uh, which leads to constipation and to pot bellies. By the way, there are hardly any pot bellies on the temple walls. You go to Kemet, everybody's slim. Everybody, even the workmen, they sit with their backs straight. They That's don't out, spread their legs all open or even cross their legs because crossing the legs warms the sperm and kills them. Oh. It, it, it disturbs the, the temperature. That's why your testicular sac is away from your body. That's why it's not plastered onto your body, brothers. <laughs> so um, I, I always try to uh, rib my brothers uh, a little bit because uh, we are violators, not because we want to be, but because we did not learn these things. So Baba, it's interesting yeah. that you're mentioning the body. There was a question um, from Noble Lloyd Lithcott, and this is not a pushback, Lloyd, and I appreciate the respect. His question is, if our bodies are the temple of the Most High, why is it that we eventually have to move out? So I, I think this would be a good way to jump into what is the Ba, what is the Ka? How many, mm -hmm. you know, how, how many ways do we explain the soul and why do, why must we eventually vac uh, vacate these bodies? That's a good question. Um, because the body, is a little too, um, I should say, too laborious for the spaces that we move into. We don't move out of the body, we move into spirit. Where do you think we came from? What's the first thing that you do? You're breathing through your, the umbilical cord of your mother. You are always connected by spirit. And when you come out here, the first thing you do when you come in here into this earth is you catch your breath. What, you, what was given to you by your mother's umbilical is now given to you by the spirit that you've entered into, the spirit of the world. Because this whole earth, the atmosphere, is nothing but pure spirit. 
the, the very word spirit comes from the Latin word espire, which means to breathe, <laughs> you see? So we are all really spiritual, but we are taught not to delve too much into the hidden aspect of spirit. We are told that we must just hold on to belief. But I've got news for you. The age of belief has passed us now. I know that's right. That was the age of Pisces. We're now into the age of I know, that's which right. is the age of Aquarius. And the, um, the, the our brothers in the fifth dimension warned us that this is the age of Aquarius. Okay, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, you see? And here we are. So now that's why the earth is, everyone in the earth is moving and getting, getting more knowledge. That's right. Because they want to know more. And this impetus is being driven by the cosmic forces of creation. And some people are very upset that we are getting this knowledge because they say, oh, you're, you are woke. As if being woke is pejorative, it's a curse word now to be awakened. And the people who, who um, speak against being awakened is really because they wanted you to stay asleep. So they're very upset now that you have gotten this knowledge and that some of you got the nerve to try to apply it and practice it in a world that has so defamed it that so many of us are afraid. And that's why those of us who come into this knowledge are sometimes even afraid to wear the emblems of the culture. We're afraid that we're going to lose our family. Sometimes your family will push you back. Oh, that's witchcraft. If you dare to wear the eye of Heru, oh my gosh, that's a problem. Look, this is on, this is on my bracelet. You see, the eye of Heru. You see, both of them. Okay. Baba, can you, can you, is it easy for you to take that off and show it like a, up in front of the camera? Oh, sure. And I have some more to show you too. <clears throat> you see right here? Okay. The back of it has the feathers of my aunt. Okay. Is it upright or, or upside down? Okay, here we go. All right. Can and you raise I'll, it up a little bit, Baba? Sure. You see? There you go. Uh-huh. Okay. You see? Baba, I, can, I, can I use a, a modern term? What? That's a whole lot of drip, Baba. <laughs> Baba yeah. is dripping, y'all. We this got is the so coolest. people can, can comprehend. I'm noticed I'm also wearing I'm also wearing the one that they copied the Oscar from Pata. That's right. You see it here, brothers and sisters? We see it. Doesn't this look like the Oscar? They stole it, but they didn't give credit to the Africans who who brought this forth. I'm also wearing this ring. Notice that it has both Pata and Sekhmet, his consort. Can you bring it closer? Oh, sure. I got yes. a lot of stuff here that I want to bring closer to you, brothers. Okay, and good. So when you bring yeah. it closer, if you can just give the 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 story behind those okay. divine energies and people, y'all need to get y'all credit cards okay. out. We gonna get this this joyati. Remember, uh, Qatar represents the foundation in our legacy beginnings. Okay, and all the uh, all the craftsmen and craftswomen wore these emblems. Here's Pata on the left side, and there is there is Sekhmet on the the consort of Pata on the other side. Can you see that? Raise it up a little bit, Baba. There we go. Oh my okay. gosh. Yep, that's good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Notice good. I have them resting under the wings of Moot, the Divine Mother, who we call Newt. She's the heavens, you know. And in between them, you see, I have the Ankh. All right. There you go. And let us let me see what I have to the side here. On the side here, I have Pata's name spelt out in glyphs. Can you see that? Kind of. We can see the design, not necessarily clearly. OK. Let me show you even closer. There we go. There you go. Can you see it? You see the P? You see that, um, the, the rectangle? That's P. And you right below it, you see the, it looks like half a loaf. That's the T. And next to it is the H. 
You see those three holes there? Mm -hmm. the twisted flax, it's called. That is, that is the H for pate, pate. Okay, we put the A, the A in there in order to make it easy for people to pronounce it. But it's P T H, pate, pate. <laughs> you see, right? Hey, and, Baba, can I tell you a quick story? Side, on the other side, I placed the eye of Heru. Okay, you see that? Up a little bit higher. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, right there. Yes, yes. You see it. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay, now what were you saying, my beloved? So when I was at Spelman, when I graduated from Spelman, I wanted to get a tattoo. Uh-huh. And um, I told my mom, I'm getting a tattoo. I'm getting a tattoo. Because when you're 22, you think you're grown, but whatever. So I went to this tattoo artist, and his name is Ta. He, he doesn't say Pata, he says Ta, Tattoo Ta. And I got a cheetah. Now, fast forward to the present day, and Entepiu, Anika, and Jabari gave me the names to shot. So, yep, yeah, yes. So I think that there's a little bit of divine guidance there, even for the feisty 22-year-old Spelman College, recent Spelman College graduate. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. You know, there's so many things pointing to the direction that we, we should be going. That's right. And so you got it pretty early, bless you. Yes, indeed. Yes, Thank indeed. You. Thank you. Yes. Um, now, Pata, again, Pata is the foundation and all the crafts, women and craftsmen, people who work with their hands were consecrated to Pata. They were in what you would call the guild of Pata. Let's say all the people who did the, the writing of the various papyri, they were in the guild of what you would call Chehuti. If it was a female, she was perhaps in the guild of the Sesheta. Okay. So underneath all of these de de deities, these principles, there is functions that they represent. So that like the, the healing, the healing arts were under the um, guidance of the principle known as sacrament. Okay, nowadays the um, the um, the doctors they swear an oath to Hippocrates, the the Hippocrates oath, right? The Hippocratic oath, and so um, they copied, of course, from the ancients of the Nile. The Masons, likewise who were operative masons that built the pyramids and all those temples, they were under the guide, the guidance of Pata. okay? So all of these, um, the, the whole culture was structured that way so that, um, so that people would know who is who and what is what. And if you were born into, um, if you were born into a, into a scribe's family, you would become a scribe. So that the, there's a continuity of the lineage of the word from, from generation to generation. Um, also, I need to let our brothers and sisters know that the work I do is in the main hand generated. It was um, hand carved, um, not computer carved. Most the I would say 99% of the work I've done are done by hand, and that's the reason why people think I'm Amazon and they want an instant uh, instant gratification. Oh, they call me a million times. Did you did you mail it yet? <laughs> and I understand their anxiety because I'm as anxious to send it to them as they are uh, for to receive it. You know, so that gives me a lot of joy to know that there are people who want these emblems because they need to know that most of my work is really in helping couples to get their thang together <laughs> as far as marriage is concerned. You know, I do, um, I do what I call the man engagement ring. For instance, here, you see this? This is the eye of Heru. But this part, this part goes into this part you you see that you see what i did there can you do it again baba can you raise okay. up um can you see these it's 
You got to go up some. There you go. <laughs> Can you see that? Yes, too. Okay. Now, watch what I'm going to do. Huh. You see it now? It's one ring. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, sisters, when you when you um, give your 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 king his man engagement ring, let him know that, uh, especially if you get this one with the eye of Heru, let him know that you are there protecting him, okay, from those eyes of others who would um, who would step to him. You understand? <laughs> okay. We understand, Baba. I'm trying to get a. I'm trying to get accustomed to to it. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, so I have the female version likewise, which is a smaller one. Okay, because our sisters, you know, like their stuff sometimes a little on the petite side. So I do that for them likewise. Um, something else that you need to know, for those of you who are into oracles. There's a pendulum. Mm. And the women who are on this pendulum notice that they have, they stand between the lotus and papyrus columns. You see that? Yes. And on the top of it, you have, you have the, um, on the top of it, you have the, the cap stone on the top is, 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 um, Feathers of the onks, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, indeed. So speaking of onks, let's let's talk about onk. <laughs> oh yeah, that's there you go. That is uh has your name on it, right? Yeah, it has my name yes, on it. Indeed. That that one I made, the first one of those I made, I was uh, I re remember I was Years ago, I was carving a large finger ankh because um, I wanted to really rock the ankh in a big way, okay? Right. And so um, at that time, Erica Badu walked into my studio and um, I showed her this ankh that I was carving. And she says, can I have one like that? I says, not only can you have one like that, but I would personalize it for you. And that's when I made that big ankh that, that became famous um, that she was wearing, because she sat in uh, in a few of my classes, Comedics 101, okay. which, which I was teaching at the time, and um, and I made her ankh with a name on it going across the bar, you know the the, the bar here, right? Yeah, like, the bar here, yes. Like and uh, and at the bottom here, I put her name in in glyphs. This one that I'm wearing says Ankh Ankh Ucha Seneb, mm -hmm. or life prosperity, and health. And that goes all around the ring. It's even on the sides of the ring. Well, not in this version, but yes. You see? Can you all see that? You have to move it over towards your other okay. arm. Up. There we go. There we are. Right there. That's good. Okay. Can you see those emblems of culture? We can see it generally, yes. Great. Okay. So that is available for you, too, likewise. Now, um, look at this. That's beautiful. There we go. Now, Baba, can you break down the different parts of the Ankh? What, what do the different parts of the Ankh mean? And how is this a part of spiritual? How do we connect to our divine with, with this Ankh? Well, first of all, the very top of it recognizes the womb, the divine feminine. The, um, that's the Holy Mother. She had not yet become a ghost <laughs> to modern people, right. modern believers. She is very real because in African culture, we do, we honor the divinity in its feminine as well as masculine aspect, mm -hmm. not just the father, but the mother who brought us into the world. And so the crossbar symbol are the children, could be a sacred child, male or female, and of course, this, the bottom staff represents the male. Now, the the crossbar also represents the um, the atmosphere, okay? Because 
down here is earth. This is the masculine. And up here is the womb, the heavens, which is the feminine, because it's the heavenly womb that holds all of the, all of the bodies of creation. That's why we call her Newt. And the earth we call Geb, the male. But our world has been turned upside down and they've placed the man above the woman. And the template has always been the woman here and the man here because he's also the support. That's right. Like he supports the Ankh, he supports the divine feminine, his, his queen and what she brings into the world, the children. That's right. He so protects. That, yes. He supports and protects. Precisely. So that's a good lesson for our men to keep in mind the purpose of coming and bringing uh, children into the world and having a divine mate, okay? Because that's the order of the Ankh, because that is life itself. Can you all see that? Yes, you can raise it up a little bit, uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Now this one in the front is gold, in the, um, but um, I have also made it half and half. So in the back, is silver. Okay. With the two eyes of Heru. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We can see uh, it. Now, this onk is a teaching tool. That's right. You're able to teach what these emblems mean. You can teach exactly and acquaint your brothers and sisters with these emblems. Now, they're going to say, oh, that's the evil eye. Because that is the that those are the lies that have been told about our lies. ancient culture. That's right, lies, straight up lies, just straight, straight up lies. lies. You see, to keep us away from that which will give us life. That's okay? right. Instead of death, you notice that in the hood, the brothers who are shooting each other and killing each other every weekend and and during the week sometimes, they're all wearing another symbol, a symbol of death. You would hardly ever see them wearing an ankh killing their brothers. Because if they wear the ankh, they know what it means. It's about life. You cannot shoot your brother and kill him wearing an emblem of life. But if you're wearing an emblem that reminds you only of death, then it's easy for you to kill your brother. Okay? And call him that N-word in the process. Are you with me, my, my beloved sister? Yes, I'm learning too. It's good to hear. It's good to hear you teach it and explain it, especially with the Joyati. I also, oh, yes. I also have this one, Baba. So speaking about the divine feminine. Woo! Oh yes, indeed. That's where we all came from. Uh, people right say, here. <laughs> people say, hey, Baba, you are so fresh. I said. Well, I came from freshness, not staleness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's this is the doorway through which we enter into this world. That's right. You know, so let's honor that doorway. And brothers, I keep hopping on you to that doorway is supposed to be clean. So you cannot bring a whole lot of your stuff from other places into it. Okay. Honor the doorway that brought you into life and do not put foul things inside of that doorway of life. Be in Ma'at. You see this here? This is Ma'at with her divine wings. I'm going to grab and, another one of my joyery. Excuse me. And you, oh, and you notice she's wearing, she's, she's kneeling on top the emblem of Nub, the emblem of gold. Because she is pure gold. She's a principle that represents pure gold of justice, of harmony, of sobriety, of propriety, of law, of order, of balance. Okay. Um, we have a lady named Justice. I call, it, I call her Just Ice because she wears a blindfold pretending she doesn't see who's filling up her jails. But this is the... This is the um, the emblem of Mayat, you see. And this is a pendant. I also have them as earrings. You can put two right. of them in each ear. This is so and beautiful. They're, they're actually pairs. And you see at the end, she's got, she's holding the feathers of Mayat. 
and the feathers of my aunt are resting on the womb of the unk. Okay, you see that? Yes. Yes. You all make a trip down to go see Baba. Oh, to, there's yours. Oh, gosh. That's right. And Woo. to see these emblems in person, to see this Sa in person. If you've never seen this in person, it, it this is how I was brought to the Shrine of my aunt. Anika, and Tepi and Nika and I were volunteering, and I didn't know her at the time. And she had on her Sa. And something made me turn to the left. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is what is this? Like, not in a derogatory manner, but there was a feeling that I had. Like, what is this? Why am I drawn to this woman? And I was mm. like, hi, my name is Sai. What's your name, Anika? Okay, great. I was like, can you tell me what this is? And I was pointing at her rings, but I knew better than to touch. I said, what is this? And what can you tell me what this is? What is and I said, I feel like I can't touch them. I go, is this is this some kind of amulet? That's what I said. What is this? That was our first hmm. conversation. That was like my first question <laughs> to someone. Wow. To someone. What, what is this? And it was because I had, I was dis disconnected with the church because I saw all the isms and schisms and they wouldn't answer my basic questions. And so I was just like, I don't well, know. Well, you can't question God, you know that. <laughs> right, and I'm like, but you're not God, so I can question you. So they, they don't want to okay. hear those kind of questions. So um, so when when I when Anika and I shared that space, I was drawn to her, to her to her joyari, you know. So um, it 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 pulls you in. It really does, especially mm -hmm. if you are looking for the truth. You don't know where the truth is. You, you just something doesn't feel right in whatever you're doing, and you you're in the room with some sa. Then you are going to be drawn to it. Noble Lloyd would like to know where the shop is located. And Sean, can you put it in the chat? Sean or Lee or Cheryl, can you put it in the chat where the, after Baba tells us where the shrine, uh, the studio of Fatah is located? Well, it's really a studio shrine because this is where I enshrine the creations from our hands here with my beloved son and, um, and uh, beloved Sakara. We do this work here. And look, for those who are in denial of the Olmecs, being African, what do you think that is? Look at that face. Yep. That's a pendant I've recently carved that has recently been carved. And the intent is to is to um, have us wear this. I also have it as a ring. So this is going, this is not even polished yet. This is in the rough, okay? So I just want to bring it up closer. So you can see the... Um, we see the, it well. uh, Yeah, it'll be much much more detailed once it's finished, once it's been polished. I just want to show you the process also. So if it looks a bit rough, it's because it's in process. That's right. Some of the things I'm showing you are in process. They're not finished yet. They are still works that I that that have a progressive that have a, a, a progressive um, intention. Now um why why is why is this so special? Why do we not do it just all by computer? Well, first of all, these emblems are so they're so precise that uh, we want to be we want to honor the ancestors by chanting as I do them, by doing prayers, inner prayers as I do them, that the wearer would be blessed. I didn't really say the word blessed because that's a bloodletting type of word. That they would be blessed. They would enter into a place of bliss, getting these emblems of their culture. So that's why I do this hand carved work um, to re really maintain that tradition of our ancient culture. You know, so uh, for those who need to know, well, brother Baba Heru, who who have you done work for? Give us the names of some of these. Um, some of these celebrities that you've worked for. I wish there were more. All you, uh, those of you who know basketball players who make millions, tell them to come and support my work. Don't just give it all up to 47th Street in Manhattan. Uh, come to the Studi Pata down here in the Chinatown area at 55 Christie, C H R Y S T I E. I'm between Canal and Hester Streets in 
Lower Manhattan, right across the Manhattan Bridge. From Brooklyn, it's a very easy ride. From Harlem, the D or the B train will bring you to Grand Street. Okay, the D or the B train to Grand Street, and then you only have to walk a block and a half to the studio of Patel. You come and you call me, and someone will come upstairs and let you in. Notice that I'm not just open to the world, because I'm, I'm giving this to the world here, so you can come and look for me and find me, because I'm very protective of this work. That's right. Me too. It's not just for styling. It's for, it's for our meditations, for teaching, and for looking beautiful, and to connect us to our source, our ancestral source. Okay, now here's some of the good people that have worn and wear my sacred sa, my sacred joy, ari. By the way, the word ari means to do, to make, or, or to create joy. So the very word I use is a smai ka we word. Smai ka we means unity of, of the two. In this case, it's unity of the Eastern language of the Metuneter, ari, and the Western English, um, joy. So I create, we create new new terms now, you know. And uh, so Wesley Snipes, I made his wedding bands for him and his beloved queen, and I made him emblems of culture that he likewise wears. Um, I have, uh, I mentioned before Erica Badu, um, Andre 3000, you all know him. I made, I made cuffs for him. He wanted a pair of cuffs, you know. And um, Keith David, one of the most famous actors, many people do not remember his name, but you have to look at that movie called They Live, one of the most iconic fight scenes that you will ever see in the movies, him and the wrestler, the wrestler who recently passed, his name escapes me right now, but they appear in the movie They Lived, and that fight scene is a fantastic fight scene. He likewise, have done, um, uh, he, he, he has a fantastic voice. I call him the voice. Um, his, his, uh, he goes by the roar of the lion and he does have a lion's roar in his voice. He likewise, I've made his wedding bands and engagement rings and rings for his children, likewise. We do, oh, and a beautiful, beautiful queen that I met about 25 years ago at the African Arts Festival you know her as India Ari. She likewise wears um, uh, a recently made for her a beautiful uh, name ring with her name on it, with the feathers of my art. And I also gave her the meaning of it because many people want to know how do we really use these as meditations? I says, well, because they represent divine principles, you are in the field of meditation automatically. By That's the way, we are, to, we, we are hearing a lot in these days on various platforms about the quantum fields. Well, these emblems take you directly into the fields of the Netaru, the field of the divine principles of our legacy. Okay. And when you meditate, when you contemplate an emblem, say, of a culture, of this culture, and you contemplate the emblem long enough and it would lead you into a divine state of meditation, where you are going to, vistas will open to you that I cannot possibly describe, because those things that I would see are meant for me, and the That's things that you will see are meant just for you. That's right. That's the reason you cannot teach spirituality. You have to pursue it. Mm -hmm. You have to pursue the desire to know what is hidden behind the veil, okay? And if you are ardent enough in your practice, it will be revealed to you. Trust the process. That's all I can tell you. It's uh, Spirituality is something that you cannot teach. However, it's good for you to arm yourself with knowledge of our story. The oldest story of creation uh, was copied by a king of the 25th dynasty, the, the Kushite dynasty, now called Ethiopian dynasty, by Shabaka. And you can read a lot about Shabaka in the book known as Shabaka's Stone, written by Kaba Kamene. 
And those of you who are making the transition from religion into spirituality, you ought to get his book likewise, Spirituality Before Religion. Will somebody bring me the, the, the book of Sacred Nile by my good friend, Chester Higgins, please? Um, I like to share to let you know, and Chester Higgins, he has supported my work, and he likewise has some. The Sacred Nile. I would strongly suggest that you get this book. He traveled with me the last time I went to Kemet, okay? And he wears the emblems of the Ankh. He carries the Ankh, as a matter of fact. He went up with me a couple of years ago up to the, um, the, um, the cemetery where Malcolm is buried, where Paul Robinson is likewise resting, and so many others where Jimmy Baldwin is likewise resting. Mm -hmm. And he took uh, photographs of me with the, um, with the Ankh over there, their names that's in the ground. Likewise, when the African burial ground was being dedicated down here um, at the edge of Manhattan, I went there with him and he took a picture of me passing the Ankh over the... Um, over the bones of one of our ancestors mm. who was who was in this same pose, mm. okay, of the ancestors. And in the background, you'll see a sister, a Yoruba princess, a Yoruba priestess was pouring from a calabash a libation in his book, Feeling the Spirit, okay? So those are some of the... Um, the, the famous people that I've worked for, that I continue to work for, and I would like to, to add more because you have influence. I'll never forget that, um, I'll never forget that, um, oh, um, Seven Little White Lies, I wish I could find that book written by uh, the keeper of the shrine of Ma'at, um, who brother, you know him as Brother Jabari, and uh, he wrote that book, Seven little white lies that that details the lies that have been told to us that we have embraced as truth. But that book busts that all up and shows you precisely and shows you the um, and educates you into field of knowledge that they are afraid you knowing now because it will awaken you and they will they will defame you as a woke person. Because, as I said before, they want you to sleep, you know. So they want you conscious. They want you drugged out. They yep. want you that deeply sleeping that you aren't even conscious, like literally not even awake, like literally in the physical world. You know it. Here is something that I've also done recently. Well, that's beautiful. It's called the rough and the smooth of life. On one side you have the gold. On the other side you have the silver. Okay. You see, the silver is lunar, smooth as the moon, and the sun is a little on the rough side. As you can see, the gold is rough. So this is called the rough and the smooth of life. Okay? I'm doing a yin and yang ring like that likewise. Okay? Mm -hmm. So one side will be gold, the other will be silver. I like to blend the metals because in nature they, they run together sometime in veins in the earth. So if they run that way in earth, why should we not wear them? Well, people say, well, I can't wear gold or silver. I can't wear that gold pendant with a silver chain. Well, yes, you can. <laughs> the silver chain represents your mama. She's the lunar energy, but she also has a solar aspect to her. If you don't believe me, ask Sekhmet. She's a daughter of Ra. Okay. <laughs> you see, this legacy is so enriching and it gives me a lot of joy to create from its inspiration. So when you wear the emblems of the studio of Ptah, you're giving honor to your ancestors. You're giving honor to yourself. And you are also taking the opportunity to shed some light into the dark world here. A world that is that courts lies and ignorance as your deliverance. Mm -hmm. But it is a way to keep you in darkness and so we're not having that. We're not going for that anymore. People are awakening. And um, it's a great waking up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well, lies. Fare thee well, distortions. Fare thee well, I should say HS. Notice I didn't say BS. <laughs> I don't curse grass and water. 
But the H S is the human S that I don't like. It's foul and it's not true. It's a lie of what we're putting into our bodies. So if we have to spray too much in the bathroom, you know that we are lying to our bodies and upsetting the proper uh, weight of the proper balance of the papa ma'at of acid and alkaline. Mm -hmm. so, so again. So Baba, I wanna jump in. Yeah. I wanna thank Kerwin. He made a donation on my cash app. Oh. So Baba, can you give us your cash app and Lee or Cheryl, can you put it in the chat? Also, Baba, can you give the cross streets again? Because That's, as I said before, Hester, I mean, I'm sorry, Christie Street, 55 five Christie between Canal and Hester. Canal so, is the first street you will meet when you come off the Manhattan Bridge. That Canal Street, it runs. I'm between two rivers. I've always been here around in this area between rivers because I'm a river person, you know, Hapi means the two rivers, the, the blue Hapi coming out of the, the um, we call it the Iteru Kesbet, coming out of Kush, and the Iteru Hetch, the white Nile coming out of Lake Victoria, Nyanza Victoria in Central Equatorial Africa. This is the culture that if you're looking for your roots deeper, you have to go down into the south. That's where this culture came from. That's right. And if you want roots deeper than that, you've got to be a star traveler. <laughs> okay, you got to go to the stars because our ancestors said that our divine father, Asar, his home is in the constellation of Sa, now called Orion. And our mother, her star, which we call Sirius, we call it Astsipedet, exists within the constellation of Anpu, where we have Canis Major. Okay, so we are star-born people. Originally, our spirit comes from those stars, and even um, the brother at the um, um, brother who um, oh oh yeah, Cash App Baba Heru B double A. Don't forget two A's B double A B A Heru H E R U Baba Baaba Heru Spirit of Spirits. Baaba Heru, the spirit of my ancestors is what I've taken on to serve my brothers and sisters. That's right. So, That's right. yes, dollar sign um, Baaba Heru at 55 Christie between Canal and Hester. And when you come here, just call me at 212-343-9706 and I'll come upstairs and let you in or someone will invite you in so you can be served with these divine emblems of culture. And while I'm at it, I need to say, I need to thank the good people of this, uh, our beloved uh, Chinese brothers and sisters, the Oriental family in America for the opportunity to, to be here in this space and serving our brothers and sisters. And it's good for you to come down and, 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 and walk among your brothers and sisters from, from China, from Korea, from Japan, who come down to this area. This area is so crowded with people, you could hardly walk on the sidewalks because they have a very serious work ethic. And so do I. I like to be around busy people and people who are creating beauty. And uh, so that's where you'll come and find me. And when you come, you'll, be, you'll come down to the foundation floor of this building because that's where Pata is, in the very foundation. And that's where the creative spirit resides and produces for your inspiration, beloved brothers and sisters. So, Baba, just yeah. so I'm clear, the number is 212-343-9706. Is that correct, Baba? Yes. Yes, beloved. It All is. right. I'm about to put it in the chat. <laughs> okay. And for those of you who don't live in New York, cross streets are important. Okay, so. That's right. Canal and Hester, right. Between Canal and Hester Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, between Canal and Hester. Oh, okay. there's Brother McCoy, Lee Sankofa. <laughs> That's right. He's on the scene. He's always very supportive. Thank you, Lee. He sure is. Heru Lee, I should call you Heru. Sankofa, you know, he's going back to fetch it in the middle of his name. That's wonderful. I have a Sankofa tattoo. Ah, and don't be, don't be, don't be put up by his name McCoy. He's from up in Ireland, where the Twa people lived there long before they were driven into the sea by 
so-called Saint Patrick. That was not a very saintly thing to do to those little short people who came all the way from equatorial Africa to inhabit your beautiful isles. And now you've killed them all, you've, you know, and you call them, you chased the snakes out of England, out of, out of Ireland. Who are those snakes? They wore the cobra on their headdress, just like the Kushite kings and just like the ancient people of Kemet. The ancient kings and queens of Kemet wore the cobra, showing that they were connected to their healing kundalini discerning force. Okay? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Baba, I also would like for you to talk about this other piece that I have from you. I need to go down there and spend... And Ooh. Spend Ooh now, look at that. Here you have the, the twins. Well, actually, they're not twins. One is uh, an, uh, a nephew. The other is the uncle. That's Heru and Set. Heru and Set. Yes, Heru and Set. They came together to cause resurrection. In other words, what this is saying, and notice the two blossoms of upper, the lotus, and the papyrus blossoms as the columns. Holding up, holding up the, the, the wings of Heru Behutet, which is the wings that's above the doorways of all the temples of Kemet. And notice they're causing your resurrection. That is saying that you have to unite your visible side to your shadow side. Reconcile them. Don't have them have an inner war going on within yourself of between your Heru and your Set. The idea is that they must be reconciled. That's right. That's okay. Right. Just like just like twins must be reconciled because they come from one source. Okay. By the way, the story of Heru and Set, how Set had killed Heru's father, was copied by Shakespeare's Hamlet. Okay. That um, Hamlet was the Heru that was born to avenge his father. But he had a problem um, doing that because he, uh, he was um, a little hesitant in his to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep to save the end of the heartache and a thousand natural shocks its flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there is the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shoveled off this, this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of soul long life. So I can go on and on, but that's a little bit of Shakespeare. Wow, that was beautiful. That was so nefer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. For who would fathers bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, that unseen born from whose that unseen place from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied all by the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, <laughs> the fair Ophelia, nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. To be or not to be, Shakespeare. <laughs> so never, I didn't, I didn't know you, you knew that, like that. That's so beautiful. You know, well, I know a few of them, you know, a few of these soliloquies. My father used to pay me a penny for every line of poetry that I could, that I could memorize. If you would memorize? So I always kept money in my pocket as a boy, as a young boy. <laughs> you know, I have to say, 
one of the reasons why I started Tuesday Talk was because I wanted to bring guests on who are experts. And I absolutely 100% love not being the smartest person in the room. I love it. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> no, you're not. Because guess, guess what? It's all inside of you. You give birth to the smartest people in every room. That's right. We did. That's right. That's you, right. You are a woman. So never you deny what you bring into the world. Thank you, Tua. Tua. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I have another one that I think is also really important to spiritual practices of, of Kemet. The Kepera. Ooh, Keperai, the scarab. Yes, indeed. That's the, that, that's the one that's in between the Heru and Set, the symbol of resurrection. That's right. It's in between yeah. in here. And if you say, oh, you're worshiping a bug. No, it's not a worship of a beetle, it's a reminder of a principle of coming into being because of how the beetle lays its egg and dung and how the lava of the beetle nourishes itself by the grass and water of the dung. Don't forget, the grass and water makes a cow so big, so you don't have to go and kill the cow to become big. All you have to do is eat the grass or have some some uh, some some wheat grass, <laughs> so you don't have to be killing all these animals, fouling up the planet with so much. Oh my goodness! Animals. Absolutely, because yes. you're feeding these cows and these these animals that you are eating some false things that is causing the shift in gender, um, gender issues in the in our world, and therefore then when that happens and people come out a bit confused, you. You beat up on them, and you, 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 um, you treat them in a very inhumane way. But I want to remind you that to be human, to be truly human, you've got to be humane. That's right. You've got That's to right. Have compassion. And I keep saying every time you come down on these people, people who have been molested in churches, people who have been molested in their homes, people yep. who have been molested on plantations throughout the world by the dregs that came out of England to be the overseers of the plantations here. Those butt breakers, you know, the butt breaking thing that they used to do to our, to the biggest brother on the plantation, make a mockery of him by entering him from the rear and, and causing everybody to disrespect this defiled brother. We should have more understanding of what's happening in our world, how it's being put into the Food to cause confusion for those who come out of the womb. Mm. So be careful that you do not be beating up on people because they may be confused because of what has happened to them in their life. Please. That's right. Have, have, we have, have, have understanding, have inner standing, and have center standing which is even more important than all the other standing. Because if you overstand, you're looking from the top down. If you understand, you're looking from the bottom up. If you understand, you're looking from the inside. Try center standing. You have the whole perimeter, 360 degrees. Center standing, I've not heard that one. And of course, when you've got Baba Haru, who is, among other things, an incredible divine artist, of course, we're going to have center standing. So thank you for that, Dua Baba, for oh, center yes. standing. I like that. Yes, definitely, definitely. Well, you know, I'm not, I don't take credit for these things, but I was the first to use inner standing, you see, uh, because as I said, uh, understanding, overstanding, you need to do some inner standing too. That's where you have to enter into, um, have a great meditation, by the way. You have to go within but from the center of the heart, because it's about the heart, the emblem of your heart, not just the emblem, but the, the, what it does for you. Your thoughts must be processed through your heart in order to justify your actions. And once, if it's processed through the heart, because in our scripture, in the Peritim Ru, the book of coming forth today from night, it says, my heart, my mother, my heart of my coming into being. Let there be no opposition to me by the keeper of the scales of my heart. Let my heart enter. Because you see, your heart is weighed against the feather of truth. 
That's so right. My brother would say, keep your heart light as a feather. Okay. And you keep your heart light as a feather by doing those things that add beauty to the world, that adds beauty to your family, beauty to creation. This is what we are here to do, to multiply the beauty because heaven knows there's a lot of ugliness in the world. And the only way to combat the ugliness of a lie is with my art. I don't, I, 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 I'm tempted to use the word truth, but the people who invented that word have not been so good at it. <laughs> so we must bring them back home to their ancient ancestors and the language used by these ancient ones who left the truth along the Nile, carved deep in stone to make it unforgettable and unavoidable. Yes, we see you chipping the noses. We see you chipping the lips and making excuses. Well, the reason why the, the lips are chipped is because they are protruding. The reason why the nose gets chipped is because it's, it's so far from the face. Oh, really? So why are your kids are all having flat noses? You ought to go to... <laughs> the nose performs a function. It mm -hmm. connects you to spirit. So be That's grateful right. that you have a nose. I don't care how keen it is or how flat it is. It's doing what it's supposed to do. So brothers and sisters, don't you ever let anyone shame you for the shape of your nose, the shape of your lips. They have got to, and guess what? They call some of us monkeys. I want to remind you, shave a monkey. It's the same color as a shaved pig, okay? Uh, um, and uh, a monkey, its lips are not full. Its lips are very thin, okay? No, so don't get me started. Who is the monkey here? <laughs> Who is the monkey here? I like that. I know I know where you're going. We all know where you're going, Baba. Mm, we're going to leave it right there. We're going to leave it right there. Let them guess what I'm talking about. But I want to say that uh, we as people of, of ancient Cam, um, we who are reclaiming this culture must always be in my heart to recognize that do not think that everyone who does not come in this shade is your enemy, for many has been your allies. In the movement that, and I speak of the movement of Black Lives Matter, uh, the, the sometimes people question the organization, and all things, all organizations should be questioned. That's right. And show their cards, okay? However, the movement that proclaimed that Black Lives Matter is real. And that's why throughout the world, we had many allies from many other houses. I don't like to use the term racist because there's only one from which we all came, even though we doubt where some people came from because they are not humane. Okay, we have been sent here to teach some folks how to be human how to stop lynching. You know, we speak against abortion, but we don't mind the abortion of a life hanging from a rope, do we? Our federal government has not seen it fit yet to pass an anti-lynching bill, have we? Okay. One senator voted against it and it went down the tube. How come something like that continues to proliferate? And lynching is not just at the end of a rope. You can lynch your people economically by denying them loans at your banks, by redlining where they're supposed to live, by denying them the vote that is guaranteed in the Constitution. That's right. You can do a lot of lynching in so many ways to deny people their full, their full freedom in a country that was built and dedicated to this great idea of freedom for all and liberty and justice for all. How come so many in this nation has made a mockery of this fantastic, this fantastic document known as the Constitution of the United States of America? And don't think that, don't get me 
thinking that I'm going to be hating on this country. I cannot do that and not recognize that by so doing, I'll be hating on the very ground upon which this nation was founded, a ground that's filled with the blood of my ancestors. I'm not going to curse that, no. We have a reason to be here. That's right. We have a reason to be wherever we are on this earth. And that's the reason why we should bring back the treasures of all our ancient civilizations and wear them. I invite all people of all the world to honor your ancient ancestors, even those who have been vilified, China. Hmm. Okay. Because some of the art that came out of that wonderful nation was considered to be bourgeois. And so many of the artists had their fingers and their hands cut off mm. by the revolution that took place when China embraced the religion of Marxism. Yes, it's a political religion. And like all religions, belief will always get you into trouble until oh, knowledge yes. comes on the scene. That's right. Now, Baba, yes. we have a question by mm -hmm. Kem Sara Neferatum. Baba, what is the relationship between the spiritual traditions of Kemet and the traditions of the Akan people? Oh, Good question. That's, that's very easy. Just trace the Obosum to the Neteru. Okay, that's very simple. Uh, if you are Yoruba, just trace the Orisha back to the Neteru. I'll give an example. One, one that everybody knows, you know, Shango is Herukuhuti, okay? Oshun is Hetheru, and so on and so forth. Yemaya, huh, of the ocean. Why? You know, she's the, she's the, the she's Newt, okay? So there are many of these uh, principles that were brought, but names were changed, but principles remain the same, okay? So in, in Ghana, there are many people who carry the name Ankh-Ra, okay, honoring the, and as a matter of fact, um, the keepers of the shrine of Ma'at in Harlem, they travel to Ghana all the time. They were recently installed there, and a shrine will be opening up there, likewise in Ghana, to remind our Ghanaian brothers and sisters that though your love of the King Prempe brought you into Christianity, you're learning now that it had its beginning, that Christianity did have its beginning in Kemet, and that the Messiah of the Christian religion, according to the story in your book, his life was protected by the people of Kemet. Okay, so don't you knock Kemet, don't you be fooled by the tricksters of Follywood, Follywood, yes. Uh, holly is another is a nice tree. I, I like to uh, honor trees, <laughs> like Bonso, uh, Bonsario, the one who just got pulled out of pushed out of office, was cutting down the trees in Brazil. Okay, and that's why I say with Sadguru, Sadguru, I'm happy that you're promoting the planting of trees all over the world and the care of the soil. Okay, so thank you so much, Sadguru, for that. And to all our brothers and sisters who are into natural eating, natural living, people forget that Brother Aris Latham, okay? Brother Aris Latham, he was, he was one who was very much into Oscar is upstairs. Yes, okay. So yes, um, I think that, where's my son? He left? Oh, yes. Yes, Oscar is there waiting. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, he's really getting busy. Well, while you're handling that, I'll answer a, a question. Yes, order, please do. In order to have a carrying onk, you have to be a priest or priestess. So yes. You have to first be initiated and then go through priesthood training. You cannot buy an onk, not the carry onk. Not the carrying, not the Baba Haru. You got to earn it. And you can carry, you can have a meditation onk, a, a palm size one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That we welcome you to do. But uh, no, you cannot. 
purchase. You cannot buy an I don't care how many. Si, señor. Ahora. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm, forgive me, you all. I had to take care of some very important. Some very important business. Papo. Sakara. No. <laughs> One second, please. Not a problem. Oh, no. <laughs> I really have to do this because if I don't do this, I'm going to hear from one of my, um, one of our clients who said, you did not do as you said you were going to do. And so I don't want that to happen. So I have to take care of this. We're definitely going to give you all the time you need to handle that bottle. Thank you. So take your time. Take your time. We're going to be coming to a close pretty soon. I'm going to check the chat for some questions. And um, some of the some of the questions get answered. Hey, Arriba. Oh, gracias. Thank you. De nada. Yeah, I do speak Espanol. So did you let him know we, we shoot in a movie? <laughs> we shoot in a movie. I'm kidding. We're not shooting a movie. Um, okay. I have a question. Oh, it just moved. Um, two questions. What message would Oya have for a white person? I was under the impression certain African traditions, gods are off limits for us. Yet it's possible she's appeared to me. So this is by Seti the Red Cap, who's Tamahu. That's his question. Okay. A northern sister or brother or cousin, I would say to you that deific principles, which exist in all the world systems, or original systems, are there for whoever spirit gravitates towards that point. Take it, use it for the best in the world. Use it to heal in the world. So you cannot discriminate when it comes to the spirit world. That's, that's a foul habit of humans who have not yet become humane, okay? So go ahead, beloved cousin, claim whatever gravitates towards your spirit and may you take the lessons you learn from your journeys and from your practice of what is required by that spiritual energy to the world, to your neighbors, even though they may accuse you of being a witch. <laughs> but that's the price you pay for knowledge. For living in the truth, that's right. For living that's in truth, that's right. right. And for accessing spirit. So don't you worry, you go ahead and claim whatever is works for you because your spirit has called you to Yemaya. So do not be afraid. Now some practitioners may look at you, but um, get accustomed to it because trust me, we have to deal with that every effing day in this country. Okay? All That's right. <laughs> yeah, I do cuss. I'm one of those. They call me a priest, but I do cuss from time to time. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe a boots of shot curses a little bit here and there too. We're human. We're human. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, uh, a knocky. Emphasis, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's an exclamation point. That's all it is. It's a verbal exclamation point. Um, Anaki asks, Baba, would you or the shrine? of Ma'at ever go to Aswan and preach Kemetic teachings to the Nubian Egyptians there? I tell you, I, I visited a Nubian village and I went to the blackboard where there was an Arabic teacher and um, I asked him permission to erase a couple of his Arabic um, words from the... And um, this man looked at me with daggers and I told the students, I said, you see this writing here? I did the sign of life, the onk. And I wrote the full emblem of the of the three um, of the three um, symbols that make up that word. The wave of water and a sieve that you use when you're panning gold, because life is pure gold. And I put on uh, at the, the third symbol was the actual um, symbol that has the loop on the top, the one I'm carrying here. When that Arabic teacher looked at that, he was so upset. I told the Nubian brothers and sisters, this is the right, the original writing of your ancestors before 640 AD 
when our beloved Muslim brothers invaded Kemet. But know this, they invaded Kemet in order to drive out the beastly Romans, okay? And they came with a certain um, energy, the same energy that Yeshua came with, some of that, because they claimed that too. They came with some of the same energy that, um, that uh, Abraham came with. But know this, that in its infancy, Islam was protected by the Negus, Negusti of Kush, now called Ethiopia. So once again, if it wasn't for Africans of the Niles, all of these religions would be toast. And you never forget that. Remember, it was the people of the Nile that spared your prophets of all your religions. So That's don't right. dare come up against this. Because when they came into that land, the priests and priestesses who greeted them and who were hospitable to them was carrying this. And remember that Jacob told his sons, Jacob, whose name is Israel, by the way, he told his sons, when you go into Egypt, do not be afraid to go into G Egypt, for uh, from there I will make of you a great nation. So the nation of Israel was spawned within the very womb of the Nile Valley Africans. So don't you ever forget that. Mm. Thank you, Baba. Dua, Dua for Dua. a very powerful Tuesday talk. Give very honest. powerful Tuesday talk. We got some Shakespeare. Baba, you're so smart. That was so beautiful. Oh, my God. That was so beautiful. I was just like, oh. Anyway. That was now I heard you say that. Make it O-M-N, not O-M-G. But oh. it goes to show you that the G is still a very, still a part of us. Did I say that? Well, you were, I, 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 I no, you didn't say it. I, I, I could like almost goodness. feel it yes. coming. But guess, guess, guess what? Just put the word good into it. Oh, my now, goodness. Just put the, add, add the co, the O into it. But we say, oh, my nature. Oh, my nature. Oh, my nature. O-M-N is what we, we own. We, we mm -hmm. own it. <laughs> By the way, listen to that. Om. Amasu and Pankr Sauksu and Pankr Give yourself to the divine, keep yourself daily for the divine, and do it tomorrow just as you do it today. <laughs> Baba, that yes. was beautiful. This was such a beautiful Tuesday talk. Thank you so much, Dua, for all your knowledge, all your creativity. That truly, truly African moment when you had to take a phone call in the middle and handle some business. Yeah. <laughs> that was so very comedic. <laughs> I never take time off. I'm on. I'm on call for my brothers and sisters all the That's time. Right. That's right. So, including the ones in uh, there's one. In 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 um, in Sweden, you know that that yeah that cousin who just said, "Is there a place in in the in in the Akan system?" I think she asked for for the Tamahu, for the people of the north. Hey, according to your anthropologists, all was spawned on the African continent. All, all of it, and pro prove it wrong. Don't come prove with your faith. Wrong. Don't come mm -hmm. with your feelings. Don't, don't come with, with your phrases and your hashtags. If you don't like it, I don't care. Come with the facts, period. That's it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to end Tuesday Talk. That was so beautiful with, with you singing at the end. I love it when, when you sing. Mm. It just feels... The first time I heard Baba do the opening of the way, I cried. I cried when I heard oh. it. I cried for like a week. 
It was <laughs> no, I did. I was really sad. My my aunt had my cousin had died, and my aunt and my father, and I was still really mourning when 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 I heard it, and it just sounded like that. Like I felt like I heard how the ancestors would have said it, mm. and it, that's how it felt to me. That's that's how it felt. It it, it took me like. It took me there. That's that's how I felt, and so that's how I feel when when you sing and and do the opening of the way and stuff like that. So oh, thank you so much. And I I want to invite my brothers and sisters to try to get back what English has taken away from you. They're rolling that's up right. your R. Yeah, there you go. Try to. I know it's hard, but try try that, and you, you'll be surprised the amount of heat, especially in the winter, that it gives to your whole body. That's right. You can roll your R. And other terms from from Africa, the the sound, the, the click sound, the sound, you know, toxa, you know, so, yeah. We have to train our mouth to get back some of these sounds again because when you pray, you want the ancestors who are waiting to hear their sounds because all things are recorded in the akasha. Okay, so why do you think that Islam is spreading so fast? Because five times a day you are saying, Allah, you better believe you're putting energy into the ethers. So it's time that your ancestors heard my art. It's time that they heard Netur, Netcher, Nkar, Nebet, Nebercher. Please learn how to recite these words and put these back into the cosmos so that your ancestors who are ever living in star world can hear their sounds being repeated on this tiny little bit of sod in creation. Thank you so much, Hatepu. Thank you so much, Hatepu. I, I want to end with something that JB said that kind of wraps up everything we've been saying. We are in the age of African awakening. Nothing can stop that. You better believe. You better believe it. And we're going <laughs> out. So once again, thank you all for joining me for Tuesday talk. I, I, I look forward to Tuesday talk every week. You know, I, I prepare for it throughout the week and throughout the year mm -hmm. and, and in the summertime. And, um, you know, Tuesday is game day for me. I feel like I'm about to play the, play this. I feel like I'm the Lakers playing the Celtics in the eighties. I get ready to bring you what I think you need. I would love it. If you would follow me on yoga girl, Sai on Instagram, tell me what you want me to, what you want to hear. What is it that you, want to see who would you like to hear from and i'll do my best to bring you know um those those people on okay so um i also have to say behind the scenes i have sanet cheryl who is an elder but she's so she's so fine i didn't even realize that i was just like i had to i'm like sanet cheryl is an elder but she's so fine so <laughs> Sinette, fine sanet sanet cheryl um San lee and and send and send um, Sean Rich are behind the scenes. They are behind the scenes. We work the green room. The They're in the green room. And <laughs> Sean is working the working all that stuff. When you see things change, and I really really appreciate them joining this team. You guys mm -hmm. don't see it as often, um, but but with without them, this would be um, something completely different. Okay. And and that and, and as I say that, can someone put Yoga Girl Sai on IG in the chat? Um, Don Z Jackson would like to to have my IG link. It's Yoga Girl Sai. Also, please um, let's make a, a donation to Baba Haru for all for everything he's done. A donation is something that we can we can all do. And I also have a space design that's just for black men to meditate. I'm going to be returning to that very shortly to open up that space for black men. It's for black men only. You must be black and you must be a man to join that space. It we I do a quick little um, video chat with you to see who you are. And I let black men in there because we our, our brothers need that space so that they can heal. And I, for one, want a black man. I want a father and grandfather and great-grandfather. And so the kids and the babies can have their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, their grandfathers, great-grandfather. I have my great-grandfather. Mm. A lot of black people don't have their great-grandfathers. I have my great-grandfather. 
What a blessing. That's a it blessing. Is. It's a it's a blessing, and it shouldn't it shouldn't necessarily be the luck of of the draw, that, you know, that you you end up with with a great grandfather. It should be something that is linear. So so black men, please join. A, it's it's um black man meditate, and it's that's also on IG. So um, I'm gonna put it in I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. Um, yoga. I'm on my phone, guys. So this this may look a little not necessarily great. Um, yoga girl, yoga girl, sigh. And then did you guys see that? Did that come up? I mean, it's, it's yoga girl, sigh, yoga girl, you know how to spell girl and then sigh S Y yoga girl, sigh and black man meditate yoga girl, sigh is public black man meditate is private. And we do the video chat and I let you in if you're a black man. Okay. So once again, Baba, thank you so much. Thank My you pleasure, my lovely. Thank you for everybody who comes to thank you, Ivy Adams. Everybody who comes to mm -hmm. Tuesday Talk, I love doing it and I can do it without you. So peace and blessings. Shemma. Thank you.